Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak, and welcome to my channel if this is your first time here. One thing I want to talk about, this 90 gallon aquarium has been set up now, come March, five years. And in this video I want to talk about something that nobody really talks about on other YouTube channels is percolation. Percolation of fluids. <clears throat> and this is a prime example of a plenum running for over five years. Now, of course, you're looking at it. I just trimmed these about three months ago. I trimmed all the crypts that are down here up, and they grow back. The crypt grow back so fast. Within three months, they grow back to full length, and I can cut them down right to the gravel. And I warned you that if you use a plenum and you use, like, CO2 and you may use iron, that the plants could wind up just outgrowing the tank, and that's what they do. Uh, a lot of people ask me, what do you do with the tank? How do you clean the substrate? Well, you don't. You leave the substrate alone. A lot of people will make tanks because they have read the Wallstat method or whatever to use dirt. And you'll have plenty of dirt. Within a year, you'll have plenty of dirt in your substrate to feed the root systems of your plants. And... In all this time I have owned this aquarium, I've not once put in fertilizer. The only thing I've ever used is supplement it with iron, but I've never put it with a full range fertilizer in five years. The other thing about this aquarium is, before I get into percolation, is that the plants are as old as the aquarium. The polysperma plant that's on top which was supposed to die out according to some hobbyists within a year, is just about two years old. And I have seeds that I bought off of Amazon, and this is the time of year it begins to flower. So, so much for it dying off after a year. In fact, in the antique aquarium, it's flowering also. So this must be the time of year between January and March that the polysperma flowers. Okay, so... The aquarium with the sword plants and all the crypt that you see in the aquarium is all from five years ago. Now, hobbyists never really talk about that, do they, with their aquariums? They never tell you how old their plants are, do they? Yeah, you can have an aquarium set up, but this is what's going to happen to it. It's just going to get so full of plants, unless you keep up the maintenance constantly. And I do, I cut down the plants, like I said, but you know, uh, having a planted aquarium becomes a problem. So when you use a plenum like this, you never clean it. Within time and years, it gets dirty, just like if you use soil, and it will feed the plants through bacteria, and the bacteria breaking down the any of your food stuff or any of the fish poop or anything else all starts breaking down and acts as a fertilizer for your plant. That's how I'm able to maintain this plant going on five years. And it'll be five years this March. It'll be five years old. So we're going to talk about percolation. And people don't seem to understand about percolation because they never talk about it on the YouTube channels. Now percolation is a process of liquid slowly passing through a filter. Okay, that's what percolation is. And uh, to give an example, uh, French drain is such a demonstration of percolation. Now, I got a video that you could watch, and you can watch this. It shows an engineer. He makes a aquarium. Aquarium looks like all of our aquariums. And he puts in some gravel. At one end, he puts a hole, a drainage hole, some gravel, and fills it full of sand. Does this sound familiar? Except for the gravel part, hobbyists do what? They put sand in their aquariums right on top of the glass. However, this engineer does some one thing different so fluids can move. He puts a hole in on the right-hand side of the aquarium. So it makes drainage. And when he fills the aquarium up, 
the aquarium, as you could see through the tablets, start going to where the hole is. It causes drainage. Now imagine for a minute if he were to block that hole off, what would happen to the water? Would fluids still percolate through the sand? And the answer to that is no. All engineers know that in order to cause percolation, you have to have water movement going through the substrate, which is sand, dirt, whatever. That's how percolation works. And it's got to be released somehow. When you look at land, the water penetrates through it and goes through the water source. And from there, it goes and fills up that water source. So it's constantly moving water through the soil. So that's what's shown in the video, that the water is moving through only because it has a hole. If it didn't have a hole, you have no percolation. So a plenum works in the same way. You are constantly moving water from underneath and bringing it out so water can move and percolate through the substrate, or as you want to call it, this would become an anoxic filter because you would want the water to go slowly through it. Then, if you imagine, after watching the film, plug up the hole, would you still have fluids going through it? And the answer to that is no, you would not. You would not have percolation. We all know that. If you look at the soil and if you don't have percolation, what happens? It floods. Or you have a lake because it would fill up with water constantly and not percolate through the water fast enough and therefore you would have a lake or you would have flooding. Therefore, that's why we make drains. So water can wa wash off of your soil and into drains because if it can't go fast enough through the soil. Aquariums are the same way. Percolation is water going through a substrate. You're moving water out of it. You're keeping fluids moving slowly through that substrate, along with everything that's being produced in the aquarium, which is fish waste and everything else, and it manages to get to the roots of the plants. Now, a lot of people will say, well, plants can cause percolation. Percolation, by an engineering standpoint, is better to be assisted with some kind of mechanical means than depending on plants. If you don't believe me, look at your cypress forest. They're full, or look at a swamp. Okay, you'll see cypress trees, they're in water. Do you see them sucking up fluids through the soil and everything? Otherwise, it would go dry. The water remains because they can only transpire so much water into the air and to for help with evaporation. So, in order to get fluids moving, guarantee moving, we have to in some way aid to cause percolation whether it be a mechanical means like a bubbler, air bubbler, or a water pump, or as you see in the video, the hole that he made allowing the water to drain out and water to go down in. The slower you want the... If you imagine the, watching the video, imagine making the hole even smaller yet and having water only trickle out, maybe uh, very little compared to what the video shows, then fluids are guaranteed to move. And what shows that is the dyes that he puts in. He puts dye tablets in, and it's the dyes, you can see the dyes are moving through all that sand. Try the same experiment with your aquarium when you put sand in, You, if you put dye tablets in. See if the dye tablets will go through and how long it will take those dye tablets to even try to move to the bottom. And then do the same experiment with a plenum and you will see the dye tablets literally moving through the substrate very slowly.
So that's what you're trying to assimilate is the soil, percolation, bringing fluids through the substrate, and there's no way of doing that unless you make like some drainage hole or some way to get the fluids to move. Henceforth, a plenum is used to do that. There's no other way of doing it unless you do it like this engineer did and put a hole in the bottom of your aquarium and let water drain out very slowly from the hole to keep the fluids moving through the substrate. So it's, it's very simple. I don't know why people make it so complicated. It isn't complicated science. It is what all engineers learn about percolation. Henceforth, that's how a French drain works. The same way a plenum works. It allows fluids to move through it and go out. That simple. No hole, no, me, no way of getting the fluids to move out. The fluids are going to move so slow, they may not move at all. And if that happens, then you get hydrogen sulfide and you get methane and you get all kinds of other problems. And remember, roots will not grow without oxygen. And everybody says, well, but you put the plants in. The plants take a while to take root. And especially if you start growing plants where fluids aren't moving through it to begin with, it's going to take a while for them to establish their root system and get developed to cause percolation. And as I've said, you can't depend on plants solely like people are insisting because what if you don't want a lot of plants? And some people advocate that you fill your aquarium with 78% plants. A lot of people can't do that. A lot of people don't have the lighting. A lot of people aren't using CO2, right? A lot of people aren't using fertilizers. A lot of people aren't doing it right. A lot of people don't use CO2. They don't use the right kind of lighting. They're squirting in fluids in there for fertilizer, and the plants can't utilize it. As I said in my videos before, if you, pl if you put too much fertilizer in your aquarium, the first thing that's going to use it, use it is the algae. Algae will utilize any abundance of fertilizer you put in there. Constantly have people always asking, I got all kinds of algae. Why? You put fertilizer in there. Have you put anything in there to aid the plants? Because if the plants can't utilize it, the Liebig Minimal Law states that any one element is missing from a plant, then that will be the weakest link and maybe even stop the plant from taking up nutrients. Okay? That's the law. It all has to be in balance. So if you put a few plants in an aquarium, and if you don't have it balanced, and it doesn't have enough CO2, that is going to be the limiting factor is the CO2. Unless you have a plants that aren't really dependent upon the substrate. Java fern, for example. Anubias, for example. They don't depend on a substrate. They get their nutrients out of the water bottom. But even then, if you have fluids moving through your substrate and it gets dirty, that will go into the water body, and those plants then can utilize what's in the main aquarium because that is constantly moving very slowly. That's the science behind it. It's that easy. But people don't want to do it. People insist that I'm going to take my sand and throw it on the bottom of the aquarium. Well, then you're not going to have percolation anymore. All engineers know that. Why is it that hobbyists know better than the engineers? I can't answer that question. Maybe you can. So that's all I wanted to talk about. Uh, in March, the aquarium will be three years old, uh, five years old. Sorry, three years old. And yeah, ask somebody, oh, I've had my aquarium set up for such and such time. Yeah, well, how old are the plants? Are the plants as old as the aquarium? A lot of them will say no, they're not. They've had to replace them. I haven't had to replace the plants. 
they've grown to a point where this is what you're looking at. You're looking at wall-to-wall -wall plants. I'm still growing the same plants. You see lilies growing in there. You see everything I planted five years ago still living. So this is Dr. Novak. Until next time, happy fish keeping. And don't forget to subscribe. So it will encourage me to make more videos. So until next time, happy fish keeping.